We all know about the Japanese creation slash underworld myth about Izanagi and Izanami. They were two creator gods, Izanagi and Izanami, and they got married and created an island, which would become Japan, and started to make more gods. The last child to be born, Kagutsuchi, is a fire god, and Izanami is horribly burned as a result of the childbirth and evidently dies. And so, in response, Izanagi hops on down to Yomi, the underworld. Izanagi does meet Izanami, but she tells him that Izanagi cannot look at her. Izanagi proceeds to ignore that vital advice, lights a torch, and sees Izanami in her deathly appearance like a corpse. Izanami becomes furious that Izanagi did not listen to her one piece of instruction and sends a bunch of monsters after him. Izanagi runs out of Yomi and promptly seals the entrance to the underworld, and they break off their marriage. What you may or may not know is a similar Greek underworld myth. The myth of Orpheus and Eurydice. Orpheus is a son of Apollo, the god of the sun and music. So Orpheus is an amazing musician known far and wide for his lyre and singing skills. A lyre is a stringed instrument similar to a hand-held harp. Orpheus is in love with a beautiful girl named Eurydice, and they get married. But the god of marriage, Hymen, who is called to bless the marriage, prophesizes that such a perfect union will not last. Of course, like all Greek prophecies, it comes true. For reasons unspecified, Eurydice goes into the woods and gets bitten by a snake, and dies as a result of it. Some versions say it was while she was running from an attacker, and some say it was while she was dancing. Either way, Eurydice is dead, and Orpheus becomes so sad that when he plays his lyre, the entire world becomes engulfed in his sadness as well. Apollo eventually gets fed up with the pity party and tells his son to go to the underworld and to get his wife back. And so Orpheus does exactly that. Except it's not as simple as it sounds. As Eurydice is dead, she should not be allowed to come back to the world of the living. However, Orpheus manages to sway Persephone and Hades with his beautiful music. Hades decides to give the star-crossed lovers a chance, but with a catch. Orpheus may take Eurydice back to the world of the living on one condition. While leading her out of the underworld, he must never look back. If he does look back, she will be forced to stay in the underworld forever. And so, Orpheus agrees and begins to lead Eurydice out of the underworld. However, all the while, as they walk farther and farther, Orpheus cannot hear Eurydice's footsteps. He begins to fear the gods have fooled him, and, mere footsteps away from the entrance, turns around. And there Orpheus sees Eurydice, a shade, turning back into a human, but being forced back into the underworld because he turned around. Orpheus attempts to return to the underworld again, but cannot, because a living person cannot enter the underworld twice while alive. In the end, Orpheus dies, either by calling for death with his lyre and being torn apart by beasts or the Mayads, or by Zeus, who feared Orpheus revealing the secrets of the underworld to the world of the living. In both versions, only his head remains after death. In the lyre version, his head floats to the island of Lesbos. And in the Zeus version, the muses keep his severed head so they can listen to his beautiful singing forever. In this version, they also make his lyre a constellation. These two underworld myths have interestingly similar stories. 
a pair of lovers are separated by death the man goes to the underworld to get the woman back the woman cannot be looked at the man looks at her and they cannot reunite in the world of the living as a direct consequence there are many more similarities and differences between the two religions which i will explore in my essay